So welcome to the second installment of the Working Across Federal Lands webinar series. This is Soils 2026, Mapping Every Acre. So in, in this presentation today, we will be having Regional Director Dave Kingsbury and Regional Director Jessica Lanay presenting on the Soils 2026 and related goals for the Soil and Plant Science Division to, in some way, map every acre across the uh, United States for soils and ecological sites. Uh, Dave Kingsbury is a regional director in Morgantown, West Virginia, and is the uh, regional director of formerly Soil Survey Region 6, um, and now works across three of the new regions, um, the southeast, the northeast, and the uh, central, north central. Uh, Jessica Linnae is our regional director in Alaska, Wasilla, Alaska. Uh, she covers a lot of acreage in Alaska to, that still needs to be mapped, and both of them will be presenting on both the continental United States and the Alaska uh, region for how we're going to map every acre. As a note, Dave Kingsbury is also the team lead for the initial uh, mapping focus team as well. And with that introduction, I'm going to hand it off to Dave as our first presenter. Dave, take it away. Thank you, John. Uh, how's my volume? Very good. I can definitely hear you. Good deal. All right, thank you. All right, I um, wanted to start off with uh, SOLS 2026. I thought this is a pretty good slide, provided an overview of SOLS 2026. It's been around for a few years, and it's got several components to it. We're going to be focusing on uh, the initial inventory completion by 2026. So uh, SOLS 2026 is a process to complete a SOLS and provisional ecological site inventory for all areas of the U.S., including Alaska, by 2026. SOLS inventory will contain basic SOLS information will be useful for land managers, ecologists, modelers, and other natural resource professionals. The data will be available for download and viewing, employing many of the traditional methods used today and digital soil mapping technology will be utilized on many of these projects. Okay, um, in order to complete uh, mapping by 2026, um, it's a tall order, we have a problem. We've got uh, many acres in the conterminous United States or CONUS uh, thereafter used. Um, we have about 117 million acres or 6% of the total area remaining in CONUS. Oops, sorry about that. Okay. <laughs> All right, I gotta be careful with the arrows here, John. Um, so if you average our uh, production or our goals over the last eight years in CONUS, it would take us about 19 years to complete uh, the mapping of CONUS by uh, FY40. Alaska is even worse. There we've got uh, 304 million acres remaining, or 82% of the total area. Only 18% is actually uh, uh, available on WebSoil Survey. So given that rate, it would take 91 years uh, to finish Alaska. That is the, over the, uh, the average of the last eight years. So 20, uh, uh, sorry, 2111 would actually be the completion date there. So to put it another way, if we, we would have to increase our, our annual uh, average production significantly. So in CONUS, current uh, average is 6.1 million acres over the last eight years. We'd have to increase that to 19.5 million acres. In Alaska, the, uh, the average acreage is uh, reported is 3.3 uh, million acres. That would have to increase to 50.7 million acres a year. So really dedicating resources is going to be critical to meet this goal. The use of higher order mapping products has to be utilized. It's basically the steam release valve in order for us to actually accomplish this. Okay, so as a result of um, the, this fairly aggressive plan, uh, to meet the uh, demands of SOLS 2026, a plan of the with aggressive annual goals was developed. Although the graph for the combined CONUS and, and the eight, uh, Alaska areas show a steadily uh, accelerated increase until uh, 20. 25, this is due almost completely to Alaska. The plan is to increase staffing and project numbers, in particular in Alaska, since numbers initially were fairly low relative to CONUS. 
in uh, in CONUS, many regions have maximum annual goals actually attained in the 2020 to 2023 range, but those don't really show up in the overall uh, uh, blue line here because Alaska uh, numbers are so significant in comparison. Okay, so how do we get there? Uh, initial mapping projects, or basically filling in the not com. And a quick explanation of not com, it, it, that is equal to mapping not complete in, uh, in our NASA's database. Therefore, if it's a not com, data are not available in either Sergo, G-Sergo, Sol Data Access, or Web Sol Survey. It does also include uh, access denied or area restricted uh, polygons as well. Okay. To help achieve the goals of 2020, SOLS 2026, focus teams were established. Over a dozen uh, were set up. Uh, the initial mapping focus team was developed to help achieve the goals outlined above. So there were uh, seven goals, but three I'm really going to focus on. Uh, the first in red, develop, coordinate, and implement the process to have full data coverage by 2026. Assist in development of new standards to facilitate full data coverage by 2026. And assemble existing data. So uh, a number of different approaches were taken to this for, to, to achieve these. Uh, the first one is the uh, NOTCOM catalog, as, as it is known as. It was developed to inventory all data for all NOTCOM areas. A web map was developed from the spreadsheet showing the spatial extent of all NOTCOM areas and any data associated with those areas. It's a tool for planning and not a plan per se. And um, it's the first place to start when beginning to develop project plans for initial mapping projects. OK, the second item that uh, was developed by the initial mapping focus team and uh, well, the efforts of many people in regions and also partners was the um, project plan spreadsheet, which uh, would eventually feed a web map. And it started off as 12 columns, of fairly basic information, but key amongst those were the, uh, the area name and uh, total acres, total acres of NOTCOM, and then um, also scheduled start and completion dates. From there, we added other, uh, other details. We expanded the number of columns to uh, a hefty 32, and um, and then linked it to the, uh, a web map, basically. So it's an interactive web map. You can select uh, any of the areas, <clears throat> excuse me, any of the NOTCOM areas throughout the United States. You can actually bring up information. You're actually accessing the, uh, the project plan when you do that. OK, so you can actually expand it. And uh, several key features here. We've got the uh, completion, uh, plan completion date. We've also got uh, federal acres and also part, other partner acres. We've also got uh, the order of mapping and planned raster soil survey product, and also uh, a measure of uh, progress on that, on that uh, project plan. OK. How do we meet the goals of 20, uh, SOLS 2026? By completing Sergo using a variety of methods and products. So it was, it was determined uh, several years ago we had three main options, and the first being completing ongoing initial SOL surveys. It's basically those projects that have been started and are underway at present, and actually it's true a couple of years ago. If, if, if projects had not been started using uh, traditional methods, they would never make uh, uh, SOLS 2026 or that project would never uh, uh, be finished by 2026. So other uh, options were um, accepted or actually um, considered and accepted. One was converting pro partner products into Sergo, and I'm going to be uh, highlighting some of those later on. Then also uh, filling remaining areas um, not covered in the two uh, options above, uh, filling them with order four and five mapping. And uh, in this scenario, they could create traditional products at order four level, which would accelerate acre goals, convert stats code two into order five mapping, or create uh, digital soil mapping products that can be converted into Sergo. OK, uh, so this actually gives uh, regions an achievable goal or product. 
Now, the one caveat is that the product must be adequate for anticipated conservation planning needs. All right, uh, when you consider not com areas, not all are created equal. Uh, there are actually blank areas. Alaska is a prime example. Most of Alaska is blank. Um, there are also areas with non-sergo products, and those are highly variable. Uh, some areas have already been mapped and have a hard copy publication not in sergo, and we'll provide an example later on. Uh, some, some examples here are uh, other agencies using uh, land systems inventory and terrestrial ecological unit inventory, like the Forest Service. And then also we have partially complete areas with some documentation. Uh, and the, um, these NOTCOM areas can include highly managed federal land. They can also include mi uh, minimally managed wilderness. And these can really be uh, mapped at a higher order or lower resolution. And some areas still have private land, forming more of a, a checkerboard pattern across the landscape. Uh, one other item is work details are critical to completion of the initial mapping. Uh, we've got to mobilize to do this. OK, uh, con continuing with the idea that uh, each project is unique, uh, database, database projects not requiring field work, there are many of those around. Some regions have already uh, converted partner products. Some are in the, uh, in the process now. Uh, the Northwest region actually has eight projects that are ongoing, and they've probably completed upwards of 10 in the last few years. Uh, they currently uh, uh, utilize, oh, sorry, uh, and this would be mobilizing staff from other regions in, in these types of projects. Uh, currently, uh, uh, we utilize soil survey and regional office staffs from North Central and South Central soil survey regions. Lab technicians are also entering pedons. And uh, projects requiring field work, these are ones that um, uh, really require in-region assistance or uh, reallocation of staff. And, and also uh, out-of-region uh, details uh, are also going to be critical in this uh, scenario. OK, so completing um, Sergo, the first one I wanted to get a touch on was converting partner products. And much of the remaining NOTCOM is um, <clears throat> excuse me, is federally owned. U.S. Forest Service and BLM have inventories that can be used, and each part partner product is different, and management teams help decide how to convert the uh, uh, products into Sergo. So it's, um, we definitely tap into assistance from the states. One of the examples I wanted to bring up was uh, Binghorn National Forest. In this uh, example, is a correlated survey. However, the manuscript was completed, but was never made into a Sergo product. It may have been lacking certain features. In this case, I believe it was the spatial, uh, spatial end of things. They did not have soil maps. So spatial uh, were uh, sorry, spatial data were created were created by digitizing units at that time. No boots on the ground were needed, and and actually uh, neighboring soil survey region assisted with this process. And it's the best available product, and it's now on Web Soil Survey. So they forged ahead and got this example or this project uh, published on Web Soil Survey. Another project is the uh, Yellowstone National Park. And as you can see, it's an, yet another partner, uh, another uh, federal agency, the Park Service. Uh, this was a, a manuscript that it was not Sergo. It was one of the first digital soil mapping products. And uh, the spatial and tabular data uh, on this project were not as complete as you'd expect in a regular NRCS uh, or NCSS project. And in this case, a uh, retired uh, NRCS uh, volunteer led this effort and provided that expert uh, expertise at the local level. And it's currently available on Web Soil Survey. So just another example of a success there. And when we uh, Consider the remaining areas. Uh, those are areas that don't have significant partner data that can be converted, or uh, projects are not ongoing. We've got to look at uh, other options to fill in the uh, fill in the uh, not com areas. And uh, mapping not com at order four and, and also five uh, is is uh, the next option that we we're going to use as an example here, or give some examples in. And uh, in this case, uh, it's not always strictly an order four or order five or, or lower resolution product. Sometimes it's a, uh, something in between, or, or it mixes elements of both of those orders. And it depends on the user need and, avail uh, and accessibility and the, um, 
and what data may be available, and, and the time frame. So uh, many projects are a combination of these uh, uh, three approaches. Okay, one, one of the, a very good example of the northwest of the Salmon Chalice uh, National Forest Reimbursable. And this project actually uses uh, digital soil mapping. Um, but it does not, re uh, sorry, but uh, even in the DSM process, it does require field documentation to create, create and validate models. Uh, the access in this area is highly variable, requiring backcountry travel in many areas. Backcountry trips are very challenging logistically and physically, sometimes walking 18 miles to drop uh, camp, and sometimes they have no pack support. Good, co uh, good cooperation with partners is needed, and, and, is, and I dare say is critical. A little background on the project. It's uh, 4.3 million acres with uh, 1.6 million acres in wilderness area. The area is remote and steep with limited, with limited access, and uh, trails and pack animals are used. Climatic regimes range across elevations of about 3,000 to 13,000 feet in elevation, and uh, geologically they have diff uh, very diver diverse lithologies. So this would create a more complex legend. Uh, collaborative effort and partial U.S. Uh, Forest Service funding is key here, and um, this process will use very similar approach to the Barb Marshall Wilderness Project. Okay, the plan for the uh, Salmon Chalice National Forest. Uh, they started first with uh, easier access areas in FY19. They're uh, employing similar digital soil mapping modeling strategy used in similar projects to develop models. The project area is segmented with uh, staff shifting with field seasons, roughly a five-year project, and the products will be both raster and vector, and this is a mix of orders four and five. And uh, areas get progressively harder to access uh, the more easier access areas are uh, completed. Now, uh, one thing to point out is this does not preclude us from completing more detailed uh, products on, um, in higher management areas at another time. And again, this is where the uh, states can help us prioritize areas and, and also assist in the, in the process itself. Okay, with that, I'm going to turn the next section over to Jessica Lene. Okay, can you guys hear me okay? Yes, I we can. I think so. Okay, good deal. Um, so uh, as many of the regions in, in the country, we in Alaska also have some initial soil survey in progress as well as the conversion of partner data in Sergo. However, um, in order to meet our soil's 2026 goals with that 304 million acres, um, we will be concentrating primarily on low-resolution, high-order projects and products. Um, in Alaska, we're going to focus on a Statsco 2 to Sergo conversion, um, but low-resolution, high-order can also include the mapping of NOTCOM at higher orders by a traditional methods or utilizing DSM techniques. The majority of my talk is going to focus on the Statsco 2 to Sergo conversion product. And because we have some in, uh, outside partners on the call, I'm going to give a, a brief description of what Statsco 2 and, and Sergo is or are. Um, so Statsco 2 is essentially a digital general soils map that was either created by generalizing existing soil survey maps um, and where these were not available analyzing geology, landform, landscape, vegetation, and Landsat imagery to create broad map units. In Alaska, uh, the scale was 1 to a million, and the rest of the U.S., the scale is 1 to 250,000. So there's a pretty significant difference in stats go to for Alaska versus the rest of the U.S. Sergo, on the other hand, is our most detailed geo-referenced digital soils map with supporting attribute data. The map data are in soil survey area extent format and include a detailed field verified inventory of soils in miscellaneous areas. The scales generally range from 1 to 12,000 to 1 to 63,360 depending on land use and management needs. So this is just a visual depiction of Sergo versus Statsco 2 showing the difference in polygon density and the size of the polygons. Statsco on the right has a broad extensive map unit polygons, Sergo on the left, these are both at the same scale, um, have much more detail and inc 
excuse me, increased polygon density. Uh, so as I said before, Alaska is going to focus on a SASCO2 to SERGO conversion as our primary process for achieving soil's 2026 goal. We will be doing this in areas where the fewest conservation plans and practices are being implemented and areas that are sparsely populated. Um, the projects are often going to use a mix of a straight SASCO2 to SERGO conversion, or we may clean up the spatial and or attribute NASA's data for the SASCO data prior to the conversion. In some instances, we'll go in and gather more data to redesign the SASCO map units to use a higher taxa component. The process used is going to be based on the customer need, accessibility, uh, and available partner data. So something that I want to point out, and this, this kind of is just my own personal opinion, but I consider this SOILS 2026 to be kind of equivalent to the Provisional Ecological Site Initiative. Our goal is to provide the best available data in a single repository that is accessible to our customers, and we will go back in and update these, these broad stats go to, to Sergo conversion products at a later date. Okay, so the management teams are going to help us make the Soils 2026 decisions. Our management teams consist of regional directors, state soil scientists, federal and university partners, and we'll work together to determine priority areas, order of mapping, and the best approach to ac accomplish this task based on the customer needs, the number of conservation practices being implemented, population density, and accessibility. So in Alaska, myself and the state soil scientists and some of our staff sat down together and we used the NOTCOM catalog spreadsheet to document our proposed projects, the order of mapping that we felt was needed, and completion priority. We then sent it out to our cooperators for additional input to be sure that everyone was on the same page and they agreed with what we were proposing. So one thing I'd like to point out that I feel is kind of unique to Alaska is <clears throat> you can see the soil survey area name, and we may have multiple orders of mapping uh, needed within a soil survey area because they are so large. We might have an area that has a soil survey area that has order two mapping around its tribal village, <coughs> surrounded by wilderness area that has a SASCO two to SERGO order five conversion product, or any combination of order three, four, or five based on, again, the customer needs. So after we prioritized and sent our spreadsheet out uh, to the cooperators, we thought about how on earth are we going to do this and how are we going to let people know what the product is. So we decided that we would have three types of projects as far as the SASCO to SERGO conversion is concerned. We're going to have extent projects that are straight SASCO2 to SERGO conversion and they're going to be identified with an E alpha prefix on the map unit symbol. Um, we decided to identify the project so that both the user and future soil scientists um, knew that these areas need to be updated in the future with more detailed mapping and data collection. We also have reconnaissance projects that are kind of a hybrid between the SASCO2 to SERGO conversion and traditional mapping. These projects will be identified with an alpha R prefix on the map unit symbol. During the reconnaissance projects, we will review and analyze cooperator data identify data gaps and gather additional field data to improve the existing StatsGo data prior to um, producing an order 3, 4, 5 SERGO product. We'll also be conducting traditional soil surveys on intensively used and managed areas. Okay, so our first attempt at a StatsGo to, to SERGO conversion is going to happen this year uh, in MLRA 234, which is the Interior Brooks Range Mountains. Um, we will be converting soil survey areas 750, 751, and 752 SASCO2 data into uh, a SERGO product. This area covers approximately 15 million acres, uh, and we selected this area because there's no demand for conservation planning. There are no communities or tribal villages in this soil survey area. Um, it's used primarily for hunting, but it's not managed for such. So we felt that this was a safe area to complete a 
direct conversion of Statco 2 to Sergo. Um, again, it's important to note that this is not a final product, but an interim map that will be updated once our 2026 goals are met. This summer, we will also begin work on a reconnaissance project uh, pending permitting from the Arctic National Wildlife Refuge. Um, the soil survey area we will be working on is Brooks Range East. Um, we're currently in the process of identifying and requesting uh, partner data. It is limited in this area because it is wilderness area, um, but we're trying to identify some and get our hands on it. And then we will conduct field work and analyze all of the NRCS and cooperator data to revise the existing spatial and tabular Statsco data to develop an Order 5 product. Uh, this product project covers 7.2 million acres and is scheduled to be completed in 2022. Okay, uh, so another low resolution, high order process has been developed, not, not in Alaska, um, but has applicability to other areas and hopefully Alaska uh, is the use of segmentation software. This particular research project that I'm talking about today was conducted about 10 years ago in southeast Arizona through a partnership with the University of Arizona in an area of low population, low utilization, and no demand for conservation planning. The project successfully used segmentation software to produce polygons delineating landforms. The software used was a privately purchased software that at the time was Decinian's Developer 7. It is now uh, eCognition. Okay, the eCognition software develops an algorithm to extract image objects and extract homogeneous image object primitives using pairwise region marked merging technique, you're then allowed to assign the image layer weight to the input layers. So you could, let's say you could uh, assign a heavier weight on the Landsat band 4 as opposed to maybe an iron oxide layer, and then the segmented raster layer is used to create a vector layer. Um, during this research project, they used dozens of input layers. Uh, and it was determined that the Landsat B4 30 meter uh, and slope 5 meter IFSAR um, were found to be the best data layers to produce the polygon delineated landform. Any of the covariate stack layers could be utilized to fit the area of interest. You do, what I think is so fantastic about this is you don't have to have any existing data for the project, um, but you do need to have expert knowledge on the back end to determine if the polygon network and density uh, fits the area. The process does not classify the polygons, it just essentially creates the, the landform polygons for you. So as a result, it was determined that the use of eCognition software as a pre-mapping tool showed great potential and its use uh, is planned in Death Valley, Golden Trout Wilderness, Radioactive Defense Area. Um, it's useful for update and initial surveys and it does not require like I said, there's to be any existing site or pet on data. Ecognition software and multi-resolution segmentation produce polygons delineated to landforms. And I think quite well you can see in the image uh, on the slide. Um, propose, it's proposed for use as a tool in minimally managed areas to produce low resolution order products. Okay. These are all types of tools and processes that are being developed and implemented for use to achieve the SOILS 2026 initiative. So where do we go from here? We need to work more closely with our federal partners to review initial mapping project plans and add detail to them. We need to improve collaboration with partners and cooperators to increase data sharing for use in DSM projects and supporting data for Statsco 2 conversion. And we need to keep our partners informed of the processes that we're planning to use in the progress of our many ongoing projects. Remember that Soils 2026 is not the final product and 
the goal is to provide the best available soils information to a single accessible repository being Web Soil Survey. But it is something that we are going to go back and revisit. We are going to improve upon it. Um, but this is designed to be the best data available at the time. If you guys have any questions. Yes, thank you so much, Jessica. Uh, so Jessica and Dave just presented on Soil 2076, and for me, really demystified a, a bit of how we're going to get there. This is our time for, for questions, and uh, the presentation ended a little early, which means more time for questions, so that's always great. Um, use the Q&A pod uh, that you'll see on your screen on the left to enter questions, and uh, I'll start going through the uh, ones we've already got in. Um, with Dave and Jessica right now. All right. So our first question is from Roger. And I think it's a question to both of you. But he asks, have you considered contract mapping from retired soil scientists to help complete mapping by Soils 2026? I think um, yeah, I, I can try to answer that, uh, John. <clears throat> Um, in, in the in the past, or you know, years ago, when we were um, when when this the soil survey actually was uh, the responsibility of the states, it was far easier to get into uh, contract mapping uh, at the state level. Uh, since uh, uh, soil and plant science division separated from the states uh, several years ago, we're actually considered above state level, and uh, our our process for getting into agreements is a lot different from the states, um, and it, it's far easier for states to do that. So if money actually came from states through NRCS, uh, you know, a given state, they could actually enter into agreements more easily. Uh, th that's my understanding of it. Um, so it, it's kind of a, a, a difficulty factor on our part. Mm -hmm. Is there anyone else that uh, can add to that or correct that if it's somewhat wrong, mostly wrong? So what I'll say is we're going to – oh, go for it, Jessica. Oh, go ahead. I'll follow up. All right. I was just going to say we will get written answers to these questions as well. I'll, I'll collect them. So if if it helps, we, we can ask around a little bit to get a, a full answer for this too. But Jessica, please go ahead. Okay. I was going to just answer uh, Alaska specifically. It's not something that we had considered here, but we most definitely, with the number of acres that we have left to map, um, I think nothing is off the table. I, I do concur with Dave. I think that it is much easier to go through the state, but maybe that is an avenue that we should explore. You know, um, it, tacking on yet again, um, with the processes that we are using nowadays, um, it, it depends on where, where a retiree is from. Um, you know, I would think that the, a more useful one would be in in the areas where initial mapping is is ongoing now, because um, it's not in the traditional sense where you're mapping, uh, drawing polygons and and whatnot. These these newer techniques don't utilize that to any to any great extent, or they, they don't always use that. I guess is what I'm saying. Traditional methods somewhat, but um, you know, we're getting the low resolution, higher order products. That you know, retirees can absolutely be of of uh, assistance, but uh, I don't know if um, if they have all maintained the same skill set. I I don't know. I'm I'm kind of shooting from the hip on that one. <laughs> and I'll definitely direct people's attention to the chat as well. We have a pretty active discussion going on with uh, Eva and Luis, also contributing some some thoughts on soil contract mapping. Definitely look there as well. All right. I think we'll move on for now, and I'll let the, the conversation keep going. Uh, I will mention just myself, because uh, Beth did put in uh, ACES, uh, and Eva also correctly said yes. Uh, soil and plant science cannot currently use ACES to hire retired um, NRCS employees to do soil survey work or ecological site work. Um, but we are looking at uh, phased retirement and other opportunities to try to 
allow our uh, senior sen our senior employees who have a lot of experience to keep working. So hopefully there will be some options in the future. All right, I'm going to move on to Wayne's question. Uh, he asks, does the 2026 initiative include areas not surveyed, access denied? So a specific type of situation. Uh, and he adds that we can only do these if we request permission and, and receive it. Um, so what to do about access denied areas for Soils 2026? Well, I, <clears throat> excuse me. I, I think it does include those areas still. Um, now, how we release that information um, remains to be seen. Uh, and I know they're, they're working through um, kind of legal issues like that. Um, or have been uh, trying to address those in the last couple of years. But I don't think it uh, precludes us from, from providing that information, even if we haven't, uh, even if we don't have boots on the ground. It's, uh, you know, it could be a process that uh, they're using out in the, the, you know, some of the other areas of initial where you've got decent mapping in close proximity, just pulling those, uh, uh, the, the landform delineations through. Um, so uh, yeah, yes, it is. I think the official answer is yes on that. All right. And yes, of course, if we don't get permission, that does make it more difficult. But that is. Hey, Jessica, do you have any question. anything to add to that? Uh, like in your experience up in Alaska? Uh, we actually have not had a lot of access denied. So so far, so good. I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers that it continues to be that way. But I would say that we probably, and I don't know about the publication of it, but I would think that we would just extend map over the area if, if possible. So that's my, my thought. Mm -hmm. Great. Uh, I'm going to move on to the next question. and. Uh, if anything comes up in the chat or questions to come back to that, we'll, we'll make sure we catch it. Um, so Drew asks, uh, isn't StatsGo2 the best available when there isn't any Sergo? So I think this is a question about conversion of StatsGo2 to Sergo. So I would say the answer is yes, and the goal is to get that StatsGo2 into web tool survey, um, into a single repository for customer use. Excellent. And I think uh, one of the examples that Jessica gave um, is is pretty similar to that. Uh, and now I, I know, all, and I think I mentioned it in my presentation, a lot of the projects don't adhere to a, a one strict uh, order or, or um, you know resolution product. Um, it, they use different methodologies and different scale of project projects. Also, I should say resolution project uh, product. So related to that, uh, Drew has a related question, so I'll link these together, um, where he asks, if Alaska Stats Go To is at the 1 to 1 million uh, resolution, minimum size delineation of 10,000 acres, uh, he asks, what, do you, what would you need the 5 meter or even 30 meter raster data sets for when a, 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 a coarser resolution of 100 meter or 800 meter might be more than adequate. So question to Jessica. So that was just the, the 5 meter and 30 meter. That was just what was used in the uh, research project in Arizona. I wasn't necessarily proposing to use that um, for Alaska. Mm -hmm. I agree with what you're saying, that, that it's probably a little bit much. Mm -hmm. That's a good clarification. Thank you. All right, I'm going to go to uh, Martin's question. He asks, uh, do you have a general idea of what tool or what preferred methodology you're thinking to use in Alaska? So I think you may have talked about a bit, this a bit, Jessica, but maybe just to re review it again. Right, so for Alaska, I think what, at this point, since we have, what, five years left, to cover approximately 300 million acres is the stats go to the Sergo conversion. We're going to do our very best to 
get additional data points and to refine the line work and things like that. Um, but in some cases where it's just not highly utilized land, we're just going to go with a straight stats go to the Sergo conversion. All right. That makes sense. Uh, I'm going to jump to, uh, I think, what's going to be a, a nice, easy question. This is from Jason, and he asks, uh, Jason, our partner from NPS, and he asks, is the NotCom catalog available for federal partners to review and suggest updates? Uh, I think the answer to that is yes. Um, we actually did use uh, input from, from federal partners uh, to, to collect that information. Ultimately, it went through the soil survey regions um, for final editing or, or tweaking. But uh, no, uh, we can revisit that. Um, let's see. Uh, as a matter of fact, that's a good topic for our ne next uh, initial mapping focus team um, to see if we need to update that. It, and uh, you know, if there are areas that didn't have, uh, didn't collect all of the information in that catalog, then we certainly could update that. So. Yeah, I, I, we can provide the link to it because it's uh, the web map. Uh, you know, can easily be visited if you have the link. Excellent. We will. Yeah, I'll make sure that that gets to Jason and our other federal partners. Uh, great thing to be able to share, and we encourage uh, feedback from our federal partners. It sounds like, so that's great. All right. Just going down the line, we got a, a question from Chris. He asks. Um, how can other states assist with mapping remotely? So I think this could be a question to both of you. Um, I, I can probably tackle a little bit here. Um, <clears throat> actually, if, if state staffs have the, the expertise to um, do correlation work or to um, uh, process uh, maybe written muds and tuds uh, like in the old days, and actually develop that into NASA's database. I think that skill set, um, whether it came from within the Soil and Plant Science Division or, or the individual states, I think can be utilized. Um, the state would just have to be willing to um, allow uh, you know, staff on you know, their own staff to engage in that. So, I I, I, yeah, go ahead. I was just going to say I agree with that and with uh, QA work. And Alaska will be, yeah, once COVID releases its grip, we'll be having details again. So detailees, NASA state of population, um, any of the above, I agree, would be incredibly helpful with permission from your regional directors. Excellent. And you know, another thing is uh, GIS skills too. Uh, you know, if, if there are uh, people that uh, work for the state that have GIS skills, they could also be employed in in uh, working remotely on uh, in supporting these projects. Excellent. And I'll say also that Eva, one of our regional directors, is also saying in the chat as well that. Similar uh, similar uh, notes as well. St state staff has have assisted by coming on detail to map in places like Wyoming. So excellent. I hope that answers your question, Chris. And we will move on to uh, James' question. Yeah, not all clearly fitting here. Uh, will there be any mapping? So James asks. James asks, will there be any mapping detail opportunities available? in the future for those who are interested in participating. Yes, and I see Eva typing, and I'm going to assume that Eva also um, wants COVID calms down a little bit, that she and I both will be uh, advertising for details. Yep, and Eva is yep. confirming that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, good deal. Uh, it looks like some people are sending some questions in the chat, so I'll just remind people to try to send them into the Q&A pod. I know Joel has a question in there, and Christine just asked a question about detail information that I think I'm just going to tackle right now because it's related. Uh, she asks, are detail information sent out to states, for example, the GIS specialists that we were talking about? Yes. 
archives in the mountain states. They are also, yeah, they're census states. I know Eva does as well. I don't uh, advertise on my FPAC. Excellent. Yep. And uh, all right, great. That answers her question. Okay. Uh, let's see. I've got maybe like three or three or so more questions that I have in, in the queue right now. So let's keep tackling them. Uh, the next question is from Daryl, and uh, it looks like it's for both of you. Um, he asks: At the time of the annual refresh, will the 2026 surveys modeled at order four have different in I think different interps different soil interpretations than the traditional order two surveys? I, I think, um, <clears throat> excuse me, I, I think the uh, it's a standard set that's, um, that's made available. And then, I mean, you can supplement that uh, in, uh, based on a, um, uh, on a, on a soil survey area when the state soil scientist uh, uploads that, uh, those, those data. So, I, I think it would be the same interpretations at, at the base level. I, I don't believe they would uh, re reduce the amount of interpretive reports that are available. I, I, I'm not, I, did that get at the uh, question? I'm, I'm not really sure if I answered that. I think you did. So the one thing that I might add is while there might still be the same number of interpretations, I don't know the functionality of all of them. If Maybe we're missing some some data for an order four or an order five, um, but someone might be able to to help us out on that. I I believe the number of interpretations will remain the same. The functionality of some of them may be different on order four versus order two. Yeah, you know that that's a good point. Uh Jessica, in our conversation, actually earlier this week with uh, Kyle, um, Kyle, you know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Stevens, I'm sorry, our national database Stevens. manager, okay. Um, it, Kyle had mentioned that, you know, basic uh, dozen and a half uh, soil properties, if it, uh, if it passes the, um, the check reports, um, it, it can be uploaded. But the only problem is if, if uh, there are interpretations, there are standard interpretations that use other data or additional data elements, then uh, those, as Jessica mentioned, you know, they, they probably, those, uh, those interpretations wouldn't be uh, available then, for at, least, at least for those components that are not more fully populated. And it looks like uh, Richard Reed also is adding some input in the chat saying that the resolution would be coarser due to the underlying data being at order five or order four, but it would be the same set offered. So uh, we'll collect all that was shared in the written answer for that too. All right. Uh, let's see, I have another question from Drew. <laughs> uh, so this question he asked, uh, if the goal is to get uh, complete coverage in, in one product, uh, why not just use GNATSCO and then say, mission complete, 2026 is done? <laughs> Drew, I think that question might be for um, GS is higher than ours. Well, and also, Part of it wouldn't, um, like with GNATSCO, it wouldn't necessarily have the uh, data elements, uh, you know, the component data populated to the same extent as a, uh, uh, you know, StatsCO2 uh, converted to Sergo. That was somewhat fresh in my mind because we just had that conversation with uh, Kyle a couple days ago. Mm -hmm. That's something that we can clarify in the written answer, though. I probably I would actually add as well, since we did talk as well about uh, field work still going and DSM work, that, of course, all that work will add greater detail than just using GNASCO at this point. So. All right. I 
think we'll collect more on the written answer for that one as well. Um, I have a question for, um, yeah, and I'll, I'll just also note that Roy has also said the later data needs to be delivered from a single source being Sergo. So that would be the, the final answer on that as well. So this is a question from Alex, and um, he's, he's saying, um, I'm not sure if Alaska's had trouble in the past hiring, but in my experience, uh, there's been issues with relocation benefits being made available that's made it harder to consider applying for Alaska soil scientist positions. Is, is so this is more of an HR question, but is it is it something that HR would consider allowing in the future to assist with 2026 mapping goals for uh, Alaska positions. So that's a question yes. for you, Jessica. Yes, with all of the positions that have been advertised recently, relocation has been authorized. There we go. So it has been authorized for those recent positions, and that's definitely a tool for filling positions moving forward as well. Yes. All right. Yep, we're going to, I think we're going to fill <laughs> all of our time with questions. This is good. <laughs> um, <laughs> let me know if you need a breath, Jessica and, and Dave. <laughs> uh, I have a, a question from uh, Joel. So he asks, do you think, so we, uh, in the presentation you all mentioned PESs and how SOIL 2026 is similar to the PES goal uh, that we recently are, we're, we're discussing the 2020 PES goal. So he asks, do you think provisional ecological site development can be accomplished using similar tools and methods simultaneously? So I think, uh, is there some cross, cross appeal for what, we're, what you're doing here? Well, so PES, I guess, is supposed to be complete for the rest of U.S. by 2020, so I think they are good to go. PES in Alaska is to be completed by 2025, and I would say yes, probably. So we're working on PES in conjunction with our essentially soil PES, and I think that we could look at it kind of in the same same light. So we are going to have some provisional ecological site groups as opposed to like the traditional provisional ecological sites which are which are more narrowly defined. So I think yes, Joel. Excellent. I bet that there will be more discussions following <laughs> up that too. I was yeah, I was <laughs> waiting. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm gonna jump to a question from one of our partners. Uh, as we have just a few minutes left and I do want to make sure I everyone out as close to on time as possible. But this is coming from Parker. He's uh, from the National Park Service based in Alaska. And he asks, is COVID-19 impacting progress for the soil 2026 effort? And if so, how? Is it impacting your timeline, capabilities, field work, or other uh, necessary parts of implementation? So I think this okay. is a good broad question for both of you. <laughs> So I would say the answer is yes, it is impacting all of it. So I think that we're getting better as far as people working remotely and um, working through all of those little hurdles. And it, in Alaska, anyway, things are beginning to um, progress more rapidly. We didn't get out in the field last year. We plan to be out in the field. That's not true. We did get out in the field some last year. But we will be out in the field considerably more this year. Um, so. Yes, I would say that there was a, a period of time where things seemed to have, we were still making progress, but it slowed down considerably, and now we're back to full swing in Alaska anyways. I know that it has affected um, folks in the lower 48 very differently than here in Alaska. So Dave, you can talk to that. Yeah, so speaking um, about CONUS, um, actually there were a number of uh, details that uh, were either canceled or cut short. And I know in, in our region, we had two that uh, had to come home early and a couple others that, um, you know, that their details were canceled. So 
it, it absolutely did have uh, a negative impact on, on the goals for this last year. Um, but they haven't really um, uh, pushed out the data on 2026. Uh, 2026 still remains. I think what it will result in is probably more um, uh, low resolution, higher order products being utilized than may have otherwise. Mm -hmm. Agreed. All right. Thank you both for that, those answers. It has been a very tough year for a lot of uh, our efforts, so good to talk about how that stuff. Yeah, and, and, and quite honestly, and that that was just the details. It's it's it, you know, in Conus, the uh, project offices, you know, overnight travel has been curtailed in, in many areas, especially when um, when the uh, when those states happen to run red on um, on, on infection. So um, yeah, and it, it hasn't been necessarily consistent throughout the, the country, but the areas that need to complete the initial mapping. Any delay in their in their activities in the field are going to affect the bottom line. Yes, very good point. All right, I'm going to try to end it on a positive note. I'm going to combine Matt and Dwayne's question into one here, and then we'll go to the the wrap up for the webinar. Uh, Thanks again for everyone for your attention. So the last question we'll cover today is uh, about staffing. So the question is essentially combining the two is, is SPSD looking to hire more staff to, to help with the 2026 goal or, and or is there any potential for increasing the number of, number of field soil scientists? Well, we're actually making a great, fairly great strides currently trying to fill vacant positions. We've been given direct hiring authority, and uh, we've also um, had several announcements out for both uh, recent grads and, and probably less help for the uh, Pathways interns. But um, we're actually uh, onboarding a large number of uh, new soil scientists over the next few months. Um, we, we just had that discussion a couple uh, hours ago in our soil operations uh, teleconference. Um, Although our FTE cap is, is, remains the same, but at least we are uh, seemingly able to uh, fill in uh, a lot of vacancies we've had. So it, it's it's been an improvement over the last couple of years. And I'll step in to also add we have a direct hire announcements out right now. So uh, that's also yet another tool for us to uh, fill vacant positions that have been vacant for some time. And Roy has just also mentioned that you've just hired a number of ecological site specialists. So I think that's that's a good positive note to end our uh, presentation on. Uh, we are getting more new staff that can help us as we try to map every acre. I want to just take the last moment to thank both of our presenters for their time in putting together this presentation and help demystify Soil 2026 and what that means for everyone. Um, the uh, recording, again, will be posted on the YouTube channel a few days after this. Uh, we'll also get uh, written questions and answers to all the attendees as well. Uh, this is uh, our flyer from this webinar. So we will have a, another webinar, a few webinars in this series um, still to be announced. So please keep that on your radar that uh, this is an ongoing webinar series and we'll have more webinars coming up. Uh, I'm looking into working on a collaboration with the Forest Service for the next one. Uh, so excited to see what comes out of that. And thank you all for taking time out of your day to attend. Uh, again, I'm John Andriani. You can always ask, uh, contact me with any questions. Uh, Dave and Jessica also provided their contact information. And the slides will also be sent out to all attendees as well. Uh, and with that, this concludes our webinar for today. Have a great rest of the day, everyone, and take care and be safe.